Welcome to the Action Network podcast presented by BetMGM. I'm your host, Chris Raybon of the Action Network, and this is your AFC betting preview part one for 2024. In this episode, we'll be previewing the AFC North and the AFC West. We'll be back with part two tomorrow with the other two AFC divisions, and then the NFC will drop Wednesday, so be sure to give all of them a listen here to help me break down the outlooks of each team in the AFC North and the AFC West. The Prime Minister of Degenerate Nation, Stucky. Stuck, what's going on? Glad to be back with you. Oh, it's good to be back. We are recording this Sunday night, the 18th. In just a couple weeks, we will be sweating out NFL action on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, beginning our long trek to the Lombardi Trophy, but I'm just excited to break down all of these teams. Uh, we're going to go division by division, four parts, go through every team, and I'm just excited to be talking football again. Hopefully, I have another profitable year. Let's get to it. Let's jump right in. Baltimore Ravens are the team with the highest win total in the AFC North, the slight favorite at BetMGM, 10.5 is the win total, minus 120 to the over, and they are plus 135 to win the division. Uh, this is a team that you're uh, always very, very dialed in on, stuck. So uh, I'll open the floor to you. you know, when you look at the Baltimore Ravens heading into this year, coming off that kind of head-scratching AFC uh, title game, uh, game plan offensively, uh, what do you see? Yeah, still not over that loss. Uh, Mahomes strikes again, taking out both of my futures. But the game plan was uh, beyond uh, asinine. I, I have no other words for it, what the Ravens were trying to do. Not running it on early downs, not using play action, not using all of the uh, – just everything that they did all year and everything that the Chiefs struggled with. But whatever. We're on to a new season. But the reason I do bring that up and wanted to say that is because, like, that was – the Ravens, to me, were the best team – in the NFL last year, that was their chance. Like they had everything. They had Lamar Jackson MVP season. They had health on offense. They had an elite defense with McDonald running the show. Their special teams were great as always. You know, you have a home AFC championship game. Everything was there for the taking. And uh, it's not going to be as easy this year. Uh, there's definitely some more questions on this team. And, you know, it, Last year, while everything did go, the team was loaded. I mean, just look at any advanced metric, but they did get some breaks that they might not get this year. Played Stroud in his first ever start with a beat-up offensive line. Hurt Burrow in week two. You know, you get Minshew, DTR, you get Pickett. Tannehill, then he gets hurt in Willis. Outdoor Pumpkin Goth, Dobbs. Burrow, then Burrow gets hurt Browning. You know, you play Rudolph. Uh, so they had a lot of beneficial quarterbacks that they did face. Uh, I think like nine beneficial spots, including like injuries. Maybe that won't be the case this year and definitely, or most likely won't be the case in weeks one through five, the brutal schedule to start the year, including the opener, which everyone knows about at Kansas city, but they're also at Dallas. They host Buffalo go to Cincinnati before the schedule lightens up a bit. But remember, they're in the AFC North. There's really no breaks. But the biggest questions I have for this team coming into this year, number one, the offensive line. That's what everyone's going to be talking about in Baltimore and everyone's going to be watching. You know, you lose three starters. Uh, you know, Moses, I think, is a big loss. Zeitler is a big loss. Simpson, meh. But you're going to be relying on, looks like Rosengarten, the rookie, is going to start at right tackle. Your left guard's going to be Voorhees. You're basically starting two. He was hurt last year. Basically starting two rookies on the offensive line. You're moving most likely a tackle to guard. Um, and, you know, Stanley's older, not getting any younger. And he's can he stay healthy? And his production is starting to slip. And even Tyler Lindebaum was one of the best centers in the NFL. He's nicked up right now. So the offensive line is a major issue. Wide receiver depth, question mark, can Bateman step up? That's he, can he break out and be consistent on the other side of Flowers? I do expect more two tight end sets this year because you have a you know you have a healthy Mark Andrews, you have likely Keaton Mitchell 
when will he return? How effective will he be in his explosiveness? Obviously, you you add Derrick Henry. The Ravens, you know, a lot of these teams in the NFL, they, they do have an identity. They're, you know, you're seeing more finesse passing offenses over the years. And the Ravens are a physical team, one of the most physical teams in the league. Just look at what they've done in the trenches. You add Henry. So the running game should be good, but can the offensive line hold up? And, you know, can Bateman step up at that wide receiver two position? Because the offense was great last year, but I think in order to reach where they want to go, it needs to be even better because I think the defense is going to take a step back. Mike McDonald was a wizard. I talked about it all last year with his game plans, everything that he did on a week-to-week basis. And, you know, they use a couple other assistants as well. You you lose guys like Clowney. Patrick Queen, I think, is overrated. I don't think it's a huge loss. Um, But, you know, you lose Geno Stone at safety. So the secondary is still loaded. You still have Roquan Smith. The defensive line worries me some and just the, the coaching like Zach or you, you stayed internal so it's going to be the same kind of defense base nickel rush for disguises sims lighter boxes um but i do think the defense is going to take a step back the one good thing about the schedule is the net rest and i think that's more important for certain teams and others and the ravens are one of them they're 21 and 5 under Harbaugh with three plus net days rest edge. They have that four times this year, which is the most in the league. Uh, so, yeah, I think the defense is going to take a step back. The offense is going to come down to the offensive line. And can they have, can they maintain the same health? They have, they, you know, past couple of years before last year, they dealt with a ton of injuries. Uh, can they have that same luck? So I do think the D takes a step, a slight step back. You got to remember the run D was vulnerable too. Now, they would mm-hmm. just, they would just throttle teams, especially when they play good teams. They would just jump out on you. Then their complex defense, their sim pressures, when teams are forced to pass, you know, and you have a guy like Kyle Hamilton who you can move all over on that secondary, very difficult on offenses. But if they're not, you know, jumping out and getting those same leads, it's it's going to be tougher. So, um, yeah, worried about the pass rush, the run D, wide receiver depth, and – most importantly, the offensive line. It's worth noting that their longtime, very good offensive line coach, uh, Joe D, he just had to step away from the team due to health concerns. Hope everything uh, goes well with him. But, you know, that's just throw that in there as well with all of this change on the offensive line. Will they be able to build continuity? And I just mentioned the schedule early on when you're, you know, trying to mesh in a whole new offensive line with a bunch of young guys without much, you know, any experience. It's a tough task. So uh, I talked about earlier this season when we did our kind of just high level episode. I like the Ravens under. Uh, I think at the time it was like 11 and a half and 11. It's down to 10 and a half now, which is kind of closer to where I had it. So no play there. But I am targeting uh, another team for the division, which is a a semi fade of the, the Ravens win total. What are your thoughts? I agree. I don't think the Ravens should be the favorite for the division. And what I really see for this team is obviously the upside is still there. You know, you have a a two-time MVP in Lamar Jackson. You still have a very good defense in terms of the, I think, the the, the personnel. But I think there's a lot more fragility, right? Because you mentioned the the, the brain drain. And we've seen that, you know, slip, uh, you know, stymie a team like the Philadelphia Eagles, even after they start, what was it, nine or ten and one last year. Uh, You have a 30 year old Derrick Henry and that, so that, you know, when does he start to, to, to decline to a level where, uh, you know, he's not really worth that investment. And now he's, he's kind of what you're really banking on at running back. You don't have Edwards, you don't have Dobbins, you know, Mitchell's not coming back uh, to start the season. So, uh, and, and you are still going to have to rely on the run. Lamar Jackson also looks like he lost some weight, which I think is interesting only because uh, you know, you might have to rely on him, to you know more this season because just because I think the schedule is going to be hard and you might he might have to be dropping back more so I don't love that you know even though it maybe it might help him in some other areas and you know just coming into the season this is something where usually we see this team above you know above average offensive line this year Pro Football Focus has them ranked number twenty five um, you know and, and it's just kind of, it could go a lot of different ways so the the upside is there but I think the floor for this team. Uh, is a lot lower than it has been. And and I agree with you. I think last year was a time 
to bet on the Ravens. Now, this year, it seems like it's a little more of a fade. The win total, I agree, came about 10 and a half. 10, 10 and a half is where it should be. But I just see uh, a much more fragile Baltimore Raven team uh, in 2024. Yeah, if the offensive line, like if Stanley, who's been hurt all the time, if he gets hurt and doesn't play up to standards and these young guys don't get it together, uh, you know, the questions on Derrick Henry, well, people could say, well, he was running down a, a bad offensive line, which is true the past couple of years in Tennessee. But that could be the case again mm-hmm. this year in Baltimore. Uh, so if I had a bet, I would actually go under, but I'm, uh, I'm projected right on. If you start listing the... You know, the schedule's not like, what do I have the schedule at? I have them with the, uh, the seventh hardest schedule in the NFL. And if you start listing the best quarterbacks in the NFL, so just go ask somebody on the street, name the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, the Ravens probably play the first seven or eight names that you list. Um, so... The, and I just mentioned before last year, they faced all those backups, you know, Burrow, when he was hurt, Burrow hurt twice, um, you know, Stroud in his first start. It's not going to be that easy this year. So uh, under or nothing, but I think the, the market has come down to a more reasonable range. Cincinnati Bengals also with a win total of 10 and a half juice to minus 120 at Bet MGM. The division odds for Cincinnati plus 165. Uh, they're favored in, uh, for me, at least 14 of, of their 17. And, you know, the teams, the, the spots where they're really dogs are Baltimore and KC. So, so a, r- a real good chance, I think, for this team to rise up and potentially even get the number one seed. Because remember, they had that last place schedule. Um, so I really like that. You know, they get New England and get to avoid the rest of the AFC East. They get Tennessee and get to avoid, you know, Houston and, and the rest of the South. And they even get Carolina. Uh, in the NFC South and games against the G-Men, uh, Washington, Denver, Vegas. So I uh, like the schedule for Cincinnati. I like that they were able to finish in last place, but still give you some confidence because they were still nine and eight. Uh, so uh, I think this is what you were alluding to when you said you're targeting another team. Talk to me about uh, Cincy. Yeah, the I like the Bengals to win the division. It's come down a little bit. Still like it. I mean, their win t- I think their win total now is like spot on with the Ravens. I mean, it's like pennies yep. different yeah. at some places. Um, but you can get a better price on the Bengals to win the division. A lot of it, and I was yelling, I was yelling at Bengals fans on Twitter all that year. Why are you rooting for Jake Browning to get you to the playoffs? You're not winning anything. You want, I was, as a Ravens fan, I was like, the thing I'm afraid of is the Bengals with a healthy Burrow getting a last place schedule. And that's what happened. Um, Last year, they played 14 games versus teams over 500. Most in the past 25 years, 11 playoff teams. Obviously, some of those are double because you're in their division because mm-hmm. the AFC North was the first team since the merger to have all four teams finish over 500. So last year, the schedule was brutal. And this year, it is the opposite. I have them, which is pretty wild because they play in the AFC North, but I have them with the fifth easiest schedule in the NFL. And just to illustrate why that's the case and what this advantage means in a rough and rugged division, you're going to have a lot of similar opponents. Here's the difference. Baltimore is Buffalo and Tampa Bay. It's either unique opponents. Buffalo and Tampa Bay. Cleveland has Miami and New Orleans. Pitt has the Jets in Atlanta. And since he gets New England and Carolina. (laughs) <laughs> projected to be two of the worst teams in the NFL. So they don't have a good as a as opposed to the Ravens, they don't have a good prep schedule and rest edge. Um they do have three short week road games, three games in 10 days late in the season. So there's some tricky scheduling spots, but it's a pretty manageable schedule overall and you're presumably going to have a healthy Burrow. We were a weird team last year in that They didn't have Burrow, which is very unlucky, but the rest of the team was pretty lucky. They were lucky in turnovers, lucky in penalties, extreme offensive line out. So um, I think think their offensive line started, all five starters started every single game. So that's one of the things that I'm worried about this year is 
you know, if Varro stays healthy, can everyone else, or the, is there some injury regression? And you look at the offensive line already, you know, Deontay Smith, who was you know, going to be a depth piece. He's out for the year. Amarius Mims, Mims. he's, he's banged up. Um, Trent Brown is dinged up. What's new. I mean, if, if there's a, I don't even know, is he still, yeah. I mean, if there's a, a chance that Jackson Carmen is in there, right tackle uh, at any point, and then it's very problematic because Orlando Brown, he has his deficiencies. The, the problem with the Bengals over the last 10, 50, they can't draft offensive linemen. I mean, they they tried to address it in free agency. Um, their offensive line has been just hard. Bottom five last three years in pass protection. Like Cordell Volson's probably like the best drafted offensive lineman they've had in a long time. But, um, you know, the defense. So I am a bit worried about just the offensive line health with some of the guys that are banged up right now in Trent Brown's history. But if they can all stay healthy, I think the offensive line does have potential. Um, then obviously you have a very good receiving core. You add Mike Kosicki as well to give you just another option up the seam. And then I think from what I've read, it's hard because it's a unique injury. Burrow should be okay, but time will tell. The defense does have some questions. You know, you lose DJ Reader. They were number one against the run with him last year. Dead last without him. It's a big loss. Um, so, you know, I'm worried about the defensive line. There's young corners. So you have, you know, DJ Turner, Cam Taylor Britt. I think Cam Taylor Britt will, is, will be a league average uh, corner. He'll be okay. DJ Turner, I have more questions about. Maybe it's Dax Hill. There's rumblings that maybe Newton gets in the mix. Uh, but they got to figure out the cornerback situation. What I do think will help is they addressed the safeties. And that position, I talked about this before last year with Lou Anarumo, so key to what he wants to do from a scheme and adjustment perspective. And their safeties just fell off a cliff without Von Bell and Jesse Bates, who were just mainstays back there. So, you know, now you're, you know, you bring back Von Bell, Battle flash. You bring in Geno Stone, who I like. So I think the safeties will kind of patch up some of those communication issues, the explosive play issues that they had. But cornerback and defensive line is certainly an issue. Cam Sample out for the year as well. That does hurt. Um, so there's some questions on this defense, but ultimately it's healthy burrow. Like with this schedule, and I think some of these other teams in the division have some flaws. Just talked about the Ravens. We'll talk about the other two teams. So while I do have some questions about the Bengals, I do like them to win the division. Yeah, I think they have massive upside because of the schedule. Uh, I would take a shot at them at you know to win the number one seed. I think I've seen it around 650. Uh, because Burrow last year, only about 4% of, of, of the pressures allowed were – uh, charge to him, you know, according to pro football focus, that was second lowest. So if the O-line does stay healthy, uh, he's going to be protected. He's going to be going against a, an easy schedule. Um, and he can, he can make up for some of the flaws of that defense if there are some. So I uh, really like the upside for Cincinnati and they are my pick to win the division as well. The Cleveland Browns. Yeah, Taylor became like oh, more aggressive with, mm -hmm. with Browning late in the year using his legs. I think some of those things can translate well uh, from a play calling perspective with Burrow. Uh, earlier this season and then you just hope that the you know winning and you have new england washington at home early carolina the giants you know winning early which i think they will do that solves all or not all but would solve a lot if they were losing early you have some of these contract issues and play you know hendrickson requesting a trade or you know i think That'll, you know, if they win early, that'll kind of push those issues to the back burner. The Browns, eight and a half, uh, minus 140 to the over is the win total, plus 500 or five to one to win the AFC North. Now, this is a Brown team that still should have one of the better offensive lines in the league, still should have one of the top defenses in the league. So we have to start with this question every year. 
what are we getting out of Deshaun Watson in his two years with the Cleveland Browns? His average yards per attempt is six and a half compared to 8.3 over his uh, four seasons in Houston. So um, let, let's just start there. What, do you, what, is, what are the Browns going to get from Deshaun Watson, in your opinion, this year? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, and I'll be getting reports on in camp, and they just haven't been good. It's, it's been ugly. Uh, I There's just been no progression. I don't know if he's lost it. Uh, he's holding on to the ball too long. He's making hard throws. Um, it's ugly. And you mentioned the offensive line. Yes, on paper, they should be good. Last year, they fell off a cliff mm -hmm. from 26 in adjusted line yards. That was because of injuries. Right? They lost both offensive tackles, Petonio. Interior of the offensive line, still rock solid. Tonio, Bochich, Teller. But the tackle situation going into the year, and by the way, you're facing what Parsons in Dallas, Allen in Jacksonville. The Giants now have a good pass rush. Uh, the, the Raiders' defensive line with Crosby and now Wilkins in the first four weeks. And their offensive tackle issues right now are – alarming to say the least Conklin, does he have any knees left i don't know i don't know if he's going to be ready if he even has any ligaments left in his knees wills who has flaws uh still uh, is not seen practicing is he gonna be ready hudson then gets hurt in the last preseason game this weekend adenji gets hurt the fetty gets hurt i mean you're down they had at one point in that preseason game they had lorenzo thompson I think he's an undrafted free agent. And Roy Mbedeki, Bedeka, I, I didn't know who that was. I thought I'd heard of every NFL player. He's from the international pipeline program uh, from Nigeria. He's never played in college, which is why I've never heard of him. They, they, they were the tackles in the game. So there is major questions. And by the way, you also lost your amazing offensive line coach in Callahan, who went with his son to Tennessee. You might see some dividends there. We'll talk about that later. So... Yeah, that that could be a major issue, the tackles, and if they are healthy. Because um, if they are, then, yeah, this offensive line is elite because you have now you have Dewan Jones. Like, I, if Wills isn't ready, like, there's talk of, like, do you move Conklin to left tackle if he's ready and put Jones at right tackle? I mean, Conklin did play left tackle, I believe, in college. But um, the health of those tackles, I have my eyes on. Running back, Nick Chubb, when will he be healthy? You know, the running back depth isn't great. Foreman is okay. Uh, but he got banged not, up too. So yeah, he got banged up. He's obviously not Nick Chubb. And but but I really just think this comes it's it's a real shame because you know, they gave 230 million fully guaranteed, sixty-four million dollar cap hit this year on Deshaun Watson. I mean, and last year he had a 17 and a half percent off target rate i think that was tied with trevor simeon is the worst in the league and the rest of the roster is ready to win like if they just had and like any other average slightly above average quarterback with all that other money they would have had too because the roster was has been built very intelligently they've drafted well i think stefanski's a super sharp coach and it's just the quarterback He's not living up to expectations, and they gave him an astronomical amount of money. I mean, he's been he's playing like a bottom five quarterback, getting paid like the top quarterback in the league. So, yeah, uh, it, this all comes down to Watson. If you believe in Watson, then I you're probably gonna I would buy Brown's upside. Um, the defense is gonna be really good. Um, you know, you your off ball linebackers you replaced Walker and Taki Taki with Bush Hicks. That's fine. Um, they added Jerry Judy. We'll see if he can correct some of his drop issues, but he had some uh, electricity, at least, to the offense. And this defense will be elite once again. Uh, I mean, last year, they were great. Um, had some inconsistencies. They're very aggressive at defense. That's what it's going to be. But they they actually were unlucky. I mean, last year, they were only minus nine turnover margin. Um, overall, like in the red zone, they were bad. Um, so they didn't have like a lot of luck either. So I think that there's, you know, I think this defense is going to be really good again. Um, they, they got pressure in under two and a half seconds, 34% of the time. And the pasty was a top three unit when they didn't get pressure. 
that's what you want. Just, they have the personnel for the Schwartz wide 9D. Heavy man, lots of press, single high, bring in six. You know, Thornhill kind of roaming in the back, nickel heavy. Why can you do that? Well, one, you have Miles Garrett. You can move them all around. But they have three outstanding man corners. And keep an eye on Greg Newsom um, and his status early in the year. He's out right now. But Denzel Ward, you do kind of worry about all these concussions that he's getting. But uh, Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson is an absolute stud. But you have those three corners. Um, then you have Delpit in the box. You can do a lot of things with him. I mean, you can do exactly what Schwartz wants to do. Get a lot of pressure. Be super aggressive on that defensive line. And then you have really good man corners on the outside. It's the heaviest man defense in the NFL. So the defense will be good again. I think unders early are going to be good with the Browns. Um, I just mentioned the defensive lines that they're going to face. And the offensive line, I don't think, no matter what, it's not going to be fully healthy. If Watson is going to get there, it's going to take him time. Um, the Jorquez, their punter, I don't know what he's taking. He's always been able to boom it. He's booming them. Uh, he's booming them even further in preseason. He's had them 65-yard punts. He can flip the field. Um, so, yeah, before four of their first – yeah, four of their first six are on the road, and they play some good defensive lines. So that offensive line – and, you know, Watson is not going to – I don't think he can make up for – a bad offensive line at this point. The other thing is like they're they added, you know, if you look at their their roster, like they're they don't have any depth at tight end now. I mean, unless you're like a Jordan Akins guy, but um they bring in Judy, they draft Brash, they have more still there, and they went to eleven personnel much more last year, which is like what Watson wants to do, but that's not the Stefanski offense, which is more heavier personnel. And that's like his how he can ski. He schemes up plays so well with that type of offense. So like there's kind of a, a misfit here. Uh, we'll see what Ken Dorsey does. Uh, Stefanski will still be the play caller. Maybe you'll see more RPOs. Um, but yeah, I like I just don't think that Watson, from what I've seen, is capable of you know r running this eleven personnel offense that he can step back and just sling it all over the field like he used to in Houston, which by the way, when he did do that too, he was indoors, um, not dealing with any weather. So yeah, I, you also have to remember the defense is going to be really good. Just a matter of like, are they super elite, elite, really good. Um, but last year, 11 of the 17 quarterbacks they faced were either hurt Right, you had Lawrence, who was playing on one leg, Burrow in the first game of the year, who was, you know, basically Matt Jones, uh, or or now backups, and they also played San Fran without Samuel, um, and uh, I believe Trent Williams was out too. So I mean, you look at some of the quarterbacks that he's hurt: Burrow, Pickett twice, you know, Tannehill, Minshew, Clayton Toon, Justin Fields, Case Keenum. Uh, you know, Trevor Simeon, Jake Browning. So, yeah, it was, they definitely faced a pretty beneficial schedule. And by the way, they went 11 and six. I know they had bad injury luck. They had five game winning drives, six and two in one possession games, five and oh in games by a field goal or less. And uh, Hopkins was money and other kickers weren't. So they had great field goal luck, which was huge when you play all those close games and win them all. So, yeah, there could be some close game regression as well. But ultimately, this comes down to a question. Obviously, it's like the offensive line. Got to watch that. This is just a question about Watson. And yeah, and I don't see it. I, I don't either. I think there's too many red flags with Watson. I don't think Winston gives you anything um, in terms of, you know, enough behind him to change the, the the projection that much and you know you mentioned the win total 11 wins for them last year uh but their point differential was that of a, a 9.4 win team so teams like that tend to regress uh in the next year um so yeah you know this is a team i think they're going to start hot so might be a team to fade in season you know they faced the giants raiders and commanders in in the first five weeks uh along with the cowboys and jags so uh, they they could be three and they could be four and one or even three and two and you could fade them to miss the playoffs or you know go lower on their win total but 
Um, yeah, it's, it, uh, right now they're under on eight and a half is juiced uh, positively and they're over is juiced up. So I would lean under uh, for the Browns. But uh, let's keep it moving with the Steelers because they're always fascinating. Uh, Tomlin has had no losing seasons and they're 12 and five over their win total, including four and no their last four years. It's eight and a half. So right there at 500, but uh, plus 110. So you are getting some plus money juice uh, to the over. Um, however, I only haven't, I haven't favored in about, I think six, yeah, six games. So, uh, this, this is kind of one that could go a lot of ways, but Tomlin always finds it a way to get it done. Does he do that again in 2024 stuff? Yeah. And by the way, before Browns fans get mad at me, yes, I know they won 11 games and they won all the close games, but they did do it with four different quarterbacks winning games and they lost both tackles, both safeties, Betonio, Chubb. I get it. There's cases on both sides, but at the end of the day, it's just about Watson. But yeah, in regards to the Steelers, 17 straight non-losing seasons. I'm sure you'll hear that a lot. 10 and 7 last year, but played more like an eight-win team. Mm-hmm. They did have the second hardest schedule in the NFL. Guess what? I have them with the second hardest schedule in the NFL this year as well. They were outgained in 12 of 17 games. Six team in NFL history to win 10 games despite being outscored by 20 plus points. Uh they were Extremely lucky. But, you know, here it's a very interesting case study. I do show value on the under. I project seven and a half, seven point five. Their win total is sitting at like eight, two, eight, three. Um, juice to the under at eight and a half. Last year, they went nine and two in one possession games. Since 2020, here are the three best teams in one possession games. Steelers 31, 11, and 1, 73.8% win percentage. Chiefs, number two, 26 and 12, 68.4%. Makes sense. Butker, Mahomes, most importantly, Reed. And the Bucks, 18 and 11, 62.1%. 31, 11, and 1. You want to take it back even further? 51, 24, and 2 over the last seven seasons in one possession game, 68%. And it's not like they've had, you know, it was Roethlisberger when he had no shoulder and then whatever cast of clowns they've had a quarterback since it's not like they've they, they've it's they've basically been for my college football listeners make sure you check out our previews there on big bets on campus they've basically been they're iowa like iowa and college football just have these anemic offenses elite defenses and then they just find a way they don't beat themselves and then they just find a way late to win force a turnover at the right time. I mean, it's crazy. And they've been doing it consistently. Like, is there regression coming or is this just who they are? I always say it with Iowa. Um, but, I mean, their special teams weren't even good that year. It just was crazy. They just, they benefit from a ton of turnovers, but it seems like that always happens in the fourth quarter. So, I don't, I would, you know, I'd rather just bet the Steelers. I might, maybe I'd bet the under, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I do show value from a number of perspective. The other thing I don't like for the schedule for the Steelers their bad teams that they face are on the road. Historically, bad spots for Tomlin, right? So they're he, – he's not farewell. Rah, rah, coach. You know, going on the road against winning teams, they're usually always prepared at home. But you're going to, like – you know, these are teams on your schedule. I have seen your schedule, one of the hardest schedules in the league. These are the teams that you think that you should beat. They're all on the road. Atlanta, Denver, Indianapolis, Vegas, Washington, um, so that might not work in their favor. But this also is a, a quarterback question, similar to the Browns. They bring in Wilson and Fields. I assume Wilson is going to start. Um, you, It should be an upgrade over last year, and they brought him in for nothing, so why not? They're not paying him. The Broncos are. And it's better than Pickett. You have – and Art Smith, the new offense coordinator, has his flaws, but it's better than Matt Canada. So at least they upgraded there. The offensive line definitely need to build continuity. Uh, Left tackle, is it going to be Jones or more? I don't know. Looks like Zach Frazier, the rookie who I like from West Virginia. I think he's going to be a good player. I thought thought the Sewers did have a really good draft. He looks like he's going to start at center. Um, You know, Fatnu is going to – the rookie looks like he's locked in at right tackle, start week one. But they've been like hurt, and they've been more in Jones than right left. They haven't really built continuity. Um, and finally, I think played left tackle in college. So, but more and Cole were bad last year. So I think like Jones, Fatnu, I think are 
you know, although Jones gave up over a 7% pressure rate. So the offensive line is still a question to me, but it's improving. Like they're, they're spending draft capital there. I think it's going to be good in the future. Still have questions for this year. You know, they were 26 in pressure rate allowed last year. Art, Art's been still going to be a run heavy offense, still going to kind of look like Iowa, but there's going to be more play action and like more effective motion. I mean, back Canada would just run on first down, run on second and long, and then pick it with try to throw it down uh, down the sideline. That was their entire offense, and they would never run play action, even though they were running on first and second every time. It'll be better than that. They were bit, that was what Iowa does. So the offense should be a little more modern. Art Smith does want to throw over the middle of the field more, which like Russ can't really do that right now. Um, so yeah, I, I think Wilson. I think Wilson's washed, um, mm -hmm. and don't think he's going to work here. By the way, uh, the backfield's good with Harrison Warren, but. Warren hamstring injury this weekend, red flag, especially early in the season. Uh, secondary is still a question for me. Lost twenty six hundred snaps from twenty twenty three. You know, you had the shot, the shot, Elliott, man, eh. Dante Jackson. I think is washed. He's right at that age where it looks like he will be. Cam Sutton, I'm not a fan of, and he's suspended. I, you know, I like their uh, Joey Porter Jr. A really strong second half of the year, but who's CB two? I think Corey Trice might have the most potential. We'll see if he ever emerges. Beanie Bishop starting in the slot as a rookie, so secondary definitely has questions, and they're relying on a lot of aging stars. Like they're getting older, um, and I'm not a huge Queen guy either, so I don't think that's like some huge get. Um, so yeah, I. Uh, I would lean under on the Steelers. I don't think Wilson's the answer. And I still have questions about this offensive line and the secondary. The schedule's really hard. Yeah, they got the 10 wins last year. Like I said, they were an eight, played like an eight-win team. Three of their last four wins to get into the playoffs, Browning twice and Huntley. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this I think if I had a bet on it, well, I mean I could I could actually bet on it. Maybe if I, I if I had to, I would bet the under and the streak ends, but I'm not sure if I will. Just Tom on his Iowa. He finds a way. And they'll they'll like pull off some up. It's like they'll beat Kansas City at home. Um, you know, they'll beat they'll definitely beat Baltimore at home. It's like it, it, it's what Tomlin does. He's gonna pull off a couple upsets. But I do think with a lot of these easier teams on the road, they're gonna drop a few games that you don't uh expect them to, which I think yeah. ultimately will keep them under. So yeah, Steelers, not a Wilson guy, still have questions on their roster. Both sides of the ball. Browns don't believe in Watson. Tackles, major question mark right now. And the Ravens, offensive line issues, think the D takes a step back. Naturally, that leaves me to Mr. Joe Burrow. Yeah, the the, the Steelers, I, I don't want to bet the under on them just because of their track record, but definitely not betting overs. I think Justin Fields is the best quarterback on that roster. Uh, so, yeah, that's I, I like the Bengals in this division as well. All right, let's jump to the AFC West. And the Kansas City Chiefs, of course, are the favorite there. 11.5 is the win total, minus 120 to the over at BetMGM, minus 250 to win the division. Of course, Andy Reid, 9-2 and two over his win total with the Kansas City Chiefs in his 11 seasons. However, lost two of three over the last three seasons. Uh, this team is trying to make history and uh, do the uh, get, get a three-peat. What do you see for Kansas City in 2024? Yeah, no, I mean, I project right close to it, which I was happy to see because who wants to bet Mahomes and Reed under? And Mahomes, uh, Reed, excuse me, 75% to the over his win totals mm -hmm. this century. Um, And yeah, you mentioned nine and two. There are two times that they didn't go over was by a half game. I mean, death taxes in Kansas City. The one thing that could derail it Injuries, they've been pretty healthy. So, I mean, obviously, if Mahomes gets hurt. Um, there's some questions on the roster, for sure. I mean, Snead is gone, which means you're going to – you're they're likely moving McDuffie to the outside. And just Snead and McDuffie, that, that was, they were just such a great tandem. Um, you, you lose Willie Gay as well. The offensive line, questions again, but Mahomes. You could just say but Mahomes to all of this. Um, but yeah. it looks like Kingsley Suma Tia. I think I said his name wrong, but uh, Sumatea, 
uh, the rookie is going to start um, at left tackle. And Taylor at right tackle. Interior is good, but the tackles, again, are going to be an issue. Wide receiver room still has questions. Can Worthy's body hold up? Obviously, the speed is going to be dangerous as hell with Mahomes. You bring in Hollywood Brown. Can he hold up? And then, obviously, you have Rasheed Rice. What's going to happen with him and his suspension? And then you have Travis Kelsey, who definitely is not as elite as he once was. We saw that all through the regular season. He, he turned it on in the playoffs. But is he going to have these weeks where he just doesn't look like the same player? So, yeah, there's some questions in the secondary, but you trust Spags to figure it out. There's some questions on the offense, but you fi- you trust Mahomes to figure it out. And I just mentioned the close game record of the Steelers. Chiefs are number two, 26 and 12 since 2020, over 68%. They're probably going to win more close games than not this year again because you have the best quarterback in the NFL. You have Reed and you have Butker to make clutch kicks. Uh, saw that. The last NFL game we watched in the Super Bowl. So, uh, yeah, I project right on. Uh, there'll be a player in the AFC, obviously. And it helps that win the Super Bowl, and I have their schedule as the 24th um, because their division is not great, especially compared to some of these other divisions in the AFC. So I project right on. Nothing preseason, but definitely be looking to fade them, um, especially when they're like a bigger favorite, as usual. Um that's for a later date. Yeah, I think Kansas City at this point, you know, every year that Mahomes has been the starter, they've gotten to the AFC Championship game. So I think if you want to bet Kansas City, you know, bet them to win the AFC Championship, bet them to win the Super Bowl, bet them to reach the AFC title game. Um, that's I think those are a lot better uh, bets than just trying to bet on the minutia of you know whether they win eleven games or twelve games. You know, the division it's minus two fifty. Not really getting. It's not worth putting your money up for you know four or five months. Uh, for that either so uh, that's how i'd kind of look at kansas city the chargers because you got to remember also because they're in a bad division and like depending on what the one seat is like um some of these teams of division we're going to talk about could be really bad and you know late in the season they might not have that could be the difference between going over and under right they like rest yeah. guys um late in the season so that's something to consider as well playing in such a bad division like that's probably not going to come into play in the afc north but, you know, we'll talk about where these other teams are projected compared to the Chiefs. There's a good chance they already have the division locked up by the final yeah. two weeks of the season. Yeah. And the Chargers, nine and a half is the win total, uh, plus 145 to the over. Uh, so the market's kind of come down on them, plus 350 to win the division. Uh, this is a team that I, I want to fade. I'm curious to hear your opinions on this. But uh, I just look at the Chargers and I see a team not in position necessarily to take advantage of its biggest strength, which is Justin Herbert throwing a football. Number one, you have Herbert coming into the year with this plantar fascia injury, which could linger. Uh, we saw how Burrow, you know, kind of struggled with a, with a leg injury when when he uh, entered the season hurt. Uh, you lost what, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams at wideout and Austin Eckler at, at running back. That's over 9,000 of Herbert's career passing yards, over half of both his passing yards and his passing touchdowns for his career between those three guys, 58 scores uh, they caught from him. And then, you know, no, Roman's notoriously run heavy. So how much were you really going to pass anyway? You know, your, your, but your backfield is Edwards, who's 29 and he's been declining in terms of his yards per touch uh, since 2020. JK Dobbins has played uh, just he nine games. Last. Yeah. So just nine games since 2020. So they have some talent, but um, you know, it's, it, I think the depth is a, is a question mark. Uh, and then the defense, you know, 26th in DVOA last year. Mac is 33. Bose has missed 20 games over the last two years. James was a shell of himself in coverage last year. Uh, you have a first-time defensive coordinator in Jesse Minter. So uh, I'm fading the Chargers. I, I don't think that this is in a competitive AFC necessarily, uh, a team that's getting to the playoffs, uh, a team that's winning 9, 10 games right off the bat, even though I have a lot of respect for Harbaugh. I, I just think there's a lot more issues than probably meet the eye uh, with this team even in, you know, a, a somewhat weak division outside of Kansas City, uh, you know, so I, I don't like the Chargers, but uh, w- what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm hoping to get like a little juice nine play under there, uh, but I I do like the under on the Chargers. I think I love that. I think Harbaugh will get it turned around, and I love the Jesse Minner hire. I'll talk about defensive coordinators later. Um, and scheme uh, at some point in one of these podcasts. Um, but I just don't think that they have 
number one on offense, they just don't have the pieces yet. Like the offensive line could be good. Um, it, you know, if, especially if all hits at right tackle, the rookie who, you know, just looks the part, uh, their offensive line could be pretty good and they want to run the ball, but the weapons just aren't there. I mean, it's like Josh Palmer, McConkey, and DJ Chark. And we saw with the passing offense, even with Herbert, when they didn't have Allen and or Williams just fell off a cliff and the weapons just aren't there for this offense. I, I don't think that our ball, it's going to take up time to build out the roster mm-hmm. and mentor to what he wants to do with the defense. I don't think has the pieces to run ideally what Minter wants to do. We saw, you know, you look at what McDonald did with the Ravens. They had a ton of talent on that team. So you're able to be much more fluid and multiple uh, and do many more things that I don't like. Yeah. Derwin James could be an interesting chess piece that I'm sure he's going to use similar to what McDonald did with Kyle Hamilton, but like Christian Fulton, uh, at, at bringing him in at corner, Jasir Taylor, Nick, like it's just not a very talented secondary. You need Asante Samuel to just bounce back and have a monster year. And you mentioned it, Mac and Bosa aren't getting any younger. Like Henley and Perryman as your inside linebackers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's not great. The depth, too. Just go down the depth. Uh, the depth on yeah. defense, if anyone gets hurt, is really the bad. Depth is, the depth is poor. And I can say that firsthand because I was at that uh, Charger Ram preseason game. And, you know, as the game progressed, I actually took a bet on the Rams live. They were down, I think, 6 3. And I, it was just because watching the Chargers' second and third t- teams and their, their depth, uh, it just wasn't there. And it, it really almost no none of the positions, especially none that matter. So, yeah, I agree. I think this Charger team, the depth is whack. The, the, the coach is good. The quarterback is good. And that's always a great starting point. But a lot of gaps to fill in uh, besides Yeah, that. and and Herbert's Leonard fashion is going to gonna linger. It's mm-hmm. going to hurt. And exactly. he's probably the not going to be as mobile. Yeah. And he's probably not going to be able to push off probably early on. I know he just came out of the boot, but that's something that's going to linger. So, yeah, I know the Chargers on paper are a buy team mm-hmm. for regression. Last year, they were super unlucky, pretty much across the board. They went 0-7 in games decided by three points or less. Finished with five wins, should have finished with a few more. But, and they do have a much easier schedule on paper. Top, top, one of the top three easiest schedules in the NFL. I still have them, uh, dogs in eight of their first 13. So I think it, it's easy at the end, but that's, you know, they'd, they'd be kind of playing catch up a little, but I, I still think it could, they could have a rough start. Uh you know, given their yeah, easy at the end. It is easy on paper in the beginning, but I'm like Vegas and Carolina to start the first two at least. Um well yeah, those two, but then yeah, so middle of the middle, I should say, middle of the schedule. Yeah. Um but they faced a ton of they faced more backup quarterbacks than any team in the league last year. So they were lucky there. And it's like the total's eight eight and a half. It's not like it's six and a half where you're getting a so it's nine and a half um, about MGM. So yeah, it's 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 it, but yeah nine and a half. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's uh yeah, but there's you know there's big juice on you know there's big juice to the under on the nine and a half and, and, I'm big, fine and, and I'll make plus money team. to the over. Yeah, this is I'll this is a fake. They can win ten games. Um, yeah, well, all right, let's uh, so, let's move. And regression. It's a completely different team. Like it's not like yeah. it's a new coaching staff. It's so yeah, the defensive line too is very worrisome. They have had trouble defending the run. That's probably going to be the case again. I mean, just look at the town on the defensive line. It's just not there. So yeah, definitely. Love Herbert. Think Harbaugh will get it turned around, but uh, even with an easy schedule and some looming regression, I, I like the under. One of my favorite unders in the AFC. Same. This, yeah, this is uh, on this podcast. This is this is the under that I'm taking. Uh, Vegas. Uh, let's close it up with Vegas and Denver. So Vegas six and a half is the win total. Uh, minus one forty five to the over. Uh, nine to one to win the West. Uh, I only have this team favored in a couple games this year. Minshew's name is starter. Um, and, you know, he kind of carried the Colts or, or was a, you know, was decent with the Colts to the point where they were in contention. But uh, I think this is could be a disaster waiting for hap- waiting to happen. Um, you know, I just don't know if the Raiders have enough really anywhere uh, to be to, to get to even to the seven win total. I think there are uh, there's just a lot of holes on this roster. I still have questions about Pierce, even though he was a nice story last year. Uh, I don't think you have much upside in the quarterback room. Devontae Adams, you know, is it, are, is he going to get traded at some point if they start poorly? Uh, just the offensive line, I think, is average at best. Uh, just uh, the defense should finally be, you know, better than, you know, it's been in years past. I mean, Raiders almost never have a great defense, but um, still don't uh, think that 
you know, this defense is like a game changing defense that's going to, you know, make up for the fact that you have Minshew and, and Aiden O'Connell uh, at quarterback. But uh, what, are you, what are you thinking with the Raiders? Yeah, the the offensive line has potential. I mean, Minshew's just like he's going to be like an average quarterback. He can win you some games. He's not going to. I think he's uh, below average. I think he's below average. I think I think yeah, the coach, he, is, I, the coach I had a top three blown. offensive line last year. I mean, uh, you, was, you know, I have him like probably like 20, uh, 20 second probably. Um, I think last year. Um, but he's not a disaster. He's serviceable. The good thing is like O'Connell he could can be. also he could be. Yeah. He could be. Like um, that that I think that was the best mention you're getting. I mean that's just I mean we could disagree. But on they that. could go to O'Connell, like and like O'Connell was fine for rookie. Like their their quarterback position is not gonna win games, but at least they have like no. two options. Like the Chargers mm-hmm. don't. So Minshew's I mean, if you got Easton Stick, who looks awful in, Oh yeah. I uh, saw that first hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. so yeah. like and the Chargers have nothing if uh he gets hurt. It's like Minshew gets hurt as ineffective, at least you can go to O'Connell. Um, the offensive line has potential if Powers Johnson, the rookie, hits a guard. And the left side, like Miller, they're both out right now. They, they're they both not – they're both hurt, so they got to get them back. Question of running back, for sure. They do have weapons on the outside. Offensive line has potential if Powers Johnson hits, Miller gets back healthy. The defense, it's one of the most interesting defenses in the NFL to me. They are – not talented, and you know they still have major questions in the secondary. But last year, they were unbelievable on defense, especially the second half of the year. Now I yep. mean, they did play a bunch of backup quarterbacks, but even if just for that, they were very good. And this is a defense, a team that spent the second fewest dollars on defense in the whole league last year, and their second highest paid player was Chandler Jones who didn't play. Yep. And they finished with a top 10 schedule adjusted defense. Why? So I went into this for hours, just watching Raiders games. And I think a lot of it just has to do with, and we've kind of tooted his horn for years um, in Patrick Graham. Um, I think he's one of the most underrated coordinators in the NFL. And if you look at his background, started with Belichick, charting plays just incessantly, got the game planning aspect of defense, worked under Spagnola, learned about all the unbelievable exotic blitzes, worked under Flores, exotic fronts, went worked under Pettin, learned quarters, then went to the Giants, D.C., peeled back the blitzes, started using more sim pressures, now he has like this hybrid, and this is all like the defenses that now are forming the more modern kind of next evolution of the Fangio defense, which is kind of like the Ravens defense, the McDonald defense. And it all starts, you know, it, they want he wants to focus on stopping the run, taking away explosive plays. And it all starts with like these unbelievable stunts and games he plays with the defensive line up front. And he's a defensive line guy by nature, but he does such a good job of confusing opposing offensive lines. They do such a good job of freeing up Crosby. Think about it. Crosby's like he was the only guy you had to worry about, and he still had unbelievable years. Now you had Christian Wilkins there. So yeah, I, I think Grant, I so I like the Raiders under. Um, but part of me is afraid of that I'm under rating their defense because of Graham. And I think he just might be a wizard that um, from a a game planning perspective um, and scheming that this defense could overperform again because I I just love his background is everything that um, you would want in a defensive coordinator. And it it showed last year. And we even liked him when he was at New York. We would would toot his horn. So uh, if I had to bet it, I I would go under with the Raiders. but I just wanted to shout out um, Patrick Graham, who's more of like this hybrid defensive coordinator. For people that don't know, you have, you know, back in the early 2000s, we were cover two. Then we went cover three, cover one. Cover three was the Pete Carroll. Then, then we went to, you know, this Fangio defense, which was, you know, your, you have mixed coverages in the back end, but it was a two high shell, a lot of cover three and quarters. And now you have the Ravens, McDonald defense, a lot of similarities to what Fangio runs, 
but just the next evolution of it. Um, and you're seeing that now. So like the Fangio tree is like Philly, where he is. The Rams, Arizona, Carolina, although Carolina has a ton of cover three. The Ravens tree is now Baltimore, Tennessee, Seattle, Chargers, Miami to an extent, although their coordinator, who we'll talk about later, is a lot of influences. Then you saw the Carroll tree, Carroll San Fran tree. You got about five coordinators there, but they've all evolved except for your boy Gus Bradley. And you have like <laughs> oh. Morris, who has evolved, Dan Quinn, who has evolved, like more cover one. San Fran, yeah. the Jets, Houston, now more quarters. Then you have like some of these hybrid guys, some of your cover one guys, your lone wolves, you know, Flores and Mayo or Belichick guys, Spags, McDermott, Jim Johnson guys. You have your cover two, Everflus influence. Zimmer is more of a cover two man. But out of the hybrid guys who kind of take a lot of these, you know, more modern influence and, and kind of shape their own defense, I, because all the offenses, modern offense, look at what Mike McDaniel's doing in Miami. He has like, he's beating these Fangio defenses. He has all the beaters with the, his motion and confusing, going over the middle of the field. These, these coordinators who can really adapt, change their defenses, change their schemes, adapt based on opponent. That's where you're going to have to live. And, you know, a guy like Graham, a guy like Anarumo, or since he comes to mind, um, and obviously McDonald and that Ravens tree, that's what they kind of hang their hat on. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of respect for uh, Graham, but I would go under if I had to. And yeah, so there's there's just not enough for me uh, at quarterback. There, and I, I still think, you know, the defense overperformed. It could underperform. You mentioned Crosby. They still were very reliant on him, uh, you know, regardless of the situation. So I, I I don't like it. I think the best thing you could say about them is the schedule is not totally, you know, too tough, but I still make them like a short underdogs in, in a lot of games. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still fading the Raiders. Uh, the, the, the Broncos, five and a half is the win total, minus 105 to the over. Uh, they're 18 to one to win the division. Uh, this is an interesting team because Sean Payton, you know, kind of made something out of nothing with Wilson kind of, got through the season after a really rough start uh, defensively with this team. Defense should be better. Um, the O-line should be okay. You know, kind of middle of the pack, maybe maybe some upside. But, uh, you know, I guess it comes down to Bo Nix, really, because I think he's going to end up getting the most starts on this on this squad. Uh, with that said, what do you think of what, – what's your outlook for Denver here with this five-and-a-half uh, win total? Uh, yeah, this is a bad roster. Um, and you got – Bo Nix calls him a name starter, but I assume he will be. It's just not a very talented team. Um, and they didn't really do much because of that. Yeah. And, you know, look at in free agency, they added because you're you're paying that Wilson money. Like Bo Nix, Stidham, Zach Wilson. Oof. Um, I mean, I guess Bo Nix can efficiently do some things in the Peyton, just like, you know, Peyton holding his hand uses legs, short passes, um, but just not a very talented roster. The defense also just kind of void of talent. Is is Damari Mathis going to start, by the way? I, um, I, I wouldn't think so. I think it's got to be like Wallace or, you know, I mean. Riley no Moss. One, is yeah. Riley Moss going to start? I mean, it's uh, not. it can't be Mathis. It can't be. It just can't be. Uh, I, by the way. What, uh, up and coming, what's hot and not? Uh, not as the Broncos quarterback situation. Hot, white corners. We haven't, <laughs> had a white, we haven't had a white corner start since 2003 in the NFL. Three chances this year. Riley Moss, um, Cooper DeGene, Philly, and... Bonner, is it? No. Yes. Yeah, Bonner. Bonner. Yeah. There's a chance he might start. He's like rising up the depth chart. Um, and we'll get to the Dolphins next episode, but so I'll talk about that then. Uh, yeah. But three chances, so we'll see if we can get one this year. But yeah, I look. I went under last year, under eight and a half. Now it's five and a half. I think it's priced properly. Um, if I had to bet it, I'd probably go under. But there's some of these teams in this division are going to beat each other. Um, yeah, you just play like five and a half, super low for a Sean Payton coach team um, with a home field advantage like Denver. Keep in mind that Peyton has averaged 10.6 wins in 16 seasons as a head coach, never fewer than seven. So um, 
no interest in going under five and a half. But yeah, no, I would I'm lean not buying this team either. I would actually lean over on the five and a half. I, I think it's priced pretty correctly, but I would lean over just because uh, I think you know that's that's kind of a forgiving price where I, I do think the the Raiders will st- struggle. I do think the Chargers will struggle, um, and you know the Broncos uh, at least they have like you know another quarterback in Stidham who is not you know bottom of the barrel terrible um kind of like you, you feel like with the with O'Connell for the Raiders so I, I think they could they could I think it's more likely they find themselves to six wins than the Raiders and Chargers go uh go over their win total but yeah I agree there's not they didn't they couldn't they were kind of uh hamstrung in free agency and in the draft you know they had to spend a pick on a quarterback they ended up spending a pick on a running back they couldn't do too much in free agency so um yeah it's you're betting on Sean Payton which is not a bad bet uh but uh, I do think the Broncos probably among the non-Chiefs teams in this division, they're they're probably the most under underrated just based on on the market because I'm low on the Chargers and I'm not feeling great about the Raiders either. Yeah, uh, and if I were if I if you were to bet a like some people like to put you know some like deep flyers. Um if you wanted to take a deep flyer in this division, um the only thing the only thing that I could recommend, and I'm not betting it myself, but the only thing that I could recommend, the Chiefs are minus 230, Chargers plus 350, Raiders plus 900. The only thing I could recommend is Broncos 20, 25 to 1. And all you're betting there is I think all the three other teams are flawed, and then you're just betting that, like, if Mahomes gets hurt um, in, like, week two. Um I would just take a fly on the Broncos because I think all those teams are terrible and you're getting like 20, 25 to one. Um, where like if Mahomes is out week one for the year, like eight wins, seven wins could win that division. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's it long shot playoff team, maybe two, uh, but that's yeah, it's this is this is not a team I want to be investing too much in, in and positively either. I'm just saying I just think of the three non-Chiefs teams, they're the most underrated. But um, you know. So let, let's wrap it up here to recap uh stuck and i both are, are bullish on the Bengals. we like them to win the division we like them uh, over the win total both uh bearish on the chargers uh, i like them to miss the playoffs i like them to go under their win total uh and, and stuck you're also a little bearish on, on ravens as well as am i um but but the market has kind of come down on uh them you can find stucky on x at stucky too i'm at chris raybon Uh, We're at those same handles on the free award-winning Action Network app where you can follow our bets and track your own all season. Uh, Until next time, let's get this money.